Hey, what up? This is Rhee here. Rhee up, my fuck. Back again with another video. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate everyone. And thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It really helps me a lot. And don't forget to check out my website, paradoxastrology.com. I'm a professional astrologer and I can help you with anything. Okay, let's get into this video. Now, I saw that NASA is launching a new rocket to the moon. And I was like, okay, so what is the occult meaning of, of this name, Artemis? Like, why would they name it that? And it's so funny how people say astrology isn't real. And <laughs> they say the occult isn't real, but it like completely lines up with everything. So I'm going to tell you what this means and how it lines up with astrology. So remember, this is going to apparently the moon, even though NASA is a, a huge fraud and they're using the money in other ways. We won't get into that. But why did they call Artemis? So there's a goddess Diana, which is also called Artemis. And it was honored as Multimamia, the many-breasted mother of all. In the scriptures, she's often depicted with many breasts covering the front of her body, with animals and some plants springing from her head, limbs, and breasts. Sometimes she wears around her waist a griddle of lions, elephants, and other animals symbolizing her motherhood of life. Trains of galley or emasculated men or boys are painted and dressed like women, ministered to the goddess or priestesses or prostitutes. At Kimona in Cap Cappadocia, as the goddess Ma, she was ministered by 6,000 Enrouge priests in the galley in Phygia, like those of Balal and Ashorish, slashed their arms with knives in religious frenzy. Now, she has to do with being the mother, the mother figure, which is also the moon. That's the, the moon in astrology. It's the nurturing side. That's why when we look as an astrologer, when I look into your chart, I can tell so much about your relationship with your mother based on the moon. And so this is done purposely and the rock is going to the moon. Now, there was cults back in the day. There's cults in 200 BC. These cults that worship Diana and Artemis. And there's other one, another one, Cybele, which is also known as the Great Mother. And in 204 BC, towards the close of the war with Hannibal, Cybele was adopted in Rome. And the orgies of her army and priests shocked the citizens and that of sophisticated metropolis. And so... From these cults, they also existed this Diana and Artemis. So this comes from many different cultures. Also, remember, they tried to launch this on August 28th, okay? The reason they did that is because in August, the festival in honor of Ishtar's descent was paralleled in Greece and Rome by festivals of the passage of the Virgin on August 13th, when the aid of Artemis and Diana was evoked to prevent storms that might injure the maturing harvest. So these are energies that are evoked in ritual. The festival was changed in the 6th century AD by the Roman church to the Feast of the Assumption of Virgin Mary on August 15th. So changed by the Catholic Church. As in all cases of festivals to honor of pagan gods, the date was of astronomical significance. In Roman calendar of Commonella, August 15th, marked the disappearance of the zodiac constellation of the Virgin. With the Greeks, that day was fixed as the day of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin, Asterel, or the Union of the Sun. During this period, the sun passed through the constellation of the Virgin, and the bright rays of the sun made the stars of the constellation invisible to eye. In the Book of the Numbers, it's related that Miriam was excluded from the Israelite camp and not allowed to show her white leprous face for seven days, and some writers interpret the account of this incident as an allegory comparable to the period in which celestial virgins cannot be seen. It is, which is Virgo, the constellation of Virgo, and it is three weeks before the sun may Make sufficient progress through the sign of Virgo to enable the constellation to be seen by the unaided eye emerging from the other side. In church calendars this day, September 8th, is devoted to the nativity of the Blessed Virgin. So 
And the interesting part about that is you see that they use astrology all the time. Now, the first date that they launched Artemis, when they tried to launch it and then they said it didn't work, the first launch was at 8.33 a.m. Eastern Time, August 29th, right? I'll put the chart up. As you can see, the moon is in Virgo, in Vedic astrology. Virgo, like they were saying. The moon is in Virgo and they're traveling to the moon and this is a festival and a ritual about the virgin and the moon, the mother goddess. They also said that they plan on putting two women up there eventually, which correlates to this occult ritual. Also, if you are going by, say, Western astrology, the sun will be in Virgo. If you're going by Vedic astrology, then technically the sun is in Leo and can't be seen by Virgo constellation like it's talking about because it's two signs next to each other don't see each other. So I thought that was super interesting and that's why this is definitely an occult ritual. Diana or Artemis had characteristics so, of that's both interesting sexes. as well. And also, Cyprus Princess Venus Diana, was represented who was also always sometimes known as kind of like the mother male figure of the Diana world or of the kingdom of, of the people, people right? Uh, she died on August God. 31st. This is also the figure that you would see that would be Mary as well in the Bible. This would be Mary the Virgin. But the actual meaning of virgin means a woman who is unmarried. It doesn't mean a woman who hasn't had sex. Back in the day, that's what a uh, virgin meant. And so that's really what these rituals are about. Like they always say that you need a ritual and you need to get a virgin, but a virgin's an unmarried woman. That's just to kind of clear that up a little bit. Because uh, the apparent misuse of the term virgin is applied to Ishtar, Venus, Aphrodite, and all of the great mother goddesses of antiquity is due to the fact that it ordinarily the word devoted merely an unmarried woman or maiden. She might even be a prostitute, a term that Ishtar applied to herself. As goddesses of generation were devoted to loss of chastity and to childbirth, although not to marriage. So unmarried just to clear that up, that whether real cult meaning of that. prostitutes. Okay, or thank you so much for watching. I appreciate status. everyone. And, and when Isis is made to say that no man lifted her veil, it means that she was never a party to marriage.